day. My name is Carter Terranzini. I'm the Templeton Town Administrator, and this is Talk of the Town. Every month we try to bring you a, a guest to converse about issues that are facing the town, projects we're working on, help keep you informed about your town government and what it is doing. Today I'm pleased to have with me John Kaplis, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. And we're going to talk a bit about the state of the town, things it's accomplished over the past year and challenges it faces. Thanks for joining me, John. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm glad to be here. Well, it's my turn. Well, today, uh, good day. Uh, my name is John Kaplis, and I've, been, I've had the most rewarding pleasure of serving as one of your five elected selectmen and chairman of the Support Select Board for all of the calendar year of 2017. <clears throat> I'm here today, here today to give you a sense of what state of the town is in at this time. In just a little over a month, we'll kick off discussion of challenges our town faces for the coming fiscal year, both budget-wise and legislative-wise. But I certainly do not want to lose sight of all we have accomplished in the past year. <clears throat> when I say we, I want to acknowledge those accomplishments were a team effort, from our highway maintenance men who keep us safe to keep our roads passable, to our police and fire who keep us safe, to our administrative personnel who process the hundreds of pages of forms and reports to monitor our business activities, maintain our files, and keep us in compliance with state and federal regulations. I say thank you. I certainly also want to extend a big thank you to all the volunteers serving on our boards and commissions who give us so freely of their time and they're dedicated to helping our town be the best it can be. It has been quite a year of accomplishments and another year where our town department managers, directorates, and employees have distinguished themselves with their dedication to helping maintain service levels and our productivity in keeping in Templeton as a great value for all. <clears throat> I'm proud of what our administrative has accomplished in these turbulent economic times and I'm proud of how we have worked together to make sure we could stabilize our finances. For the first time in some time, Templeton now has a permanent town administrator, Mr. Carter Tenzini. We welcome our new municipal management fellow, Eric Pellet, to our new position, which is already showing great promise as means of not only creativity, but also cost-effectively addressing a challenging we have struggled with these past five years. That of, that of bring stability of our top administrative positions with long-term imaginative and qualified personnel, Eric will be shadowing and learning with preparation for Templeton's future. This past year was a stellar year for our town's financial performance. After five-year lapse, we were able to complete our audits for fiscal year 2013 through 2016. Shortly, we expect to receive the audit report for 2017. With those reports in hand, we found that we had free cash certified by the State Department of Revenue in excess of $1 million, instead of the deficit some feared. With those reports in hand, we found we had made great progress in reconstructing and recon reconciling the financial records of the town, and we were not put in a receivership or any form of state control as some had feared. With those accomplishments, we found we had access to the credit market to borrow the funds needed to upgrade the Pleasant Street pump station and to begin construction on our new elementary school, turning a 15-year-old dream into reality for our future generations. Templeton has stable and improving financial position for the first time in many years. We did not need any extraordinary special town meetings to deal with our financial challenges. We fully fund the New York Answer Angel school system, increase our, op our operating hours at the Boynton Library, which had been open the fewest number of hours of any town in our area. We make modest progress in our pension contributions and other long-term obligations for the first time in many years. We also contribute to our stabilization funds and make capital investments in our, our horribly de de yeah, deteriorating uh, highway equipment. Most importantly, we now have a functioning capital planning committee in the assistance of the advisory of the UMass Collins Center for Public Management, adopting formal financial policies to guide our daily activities and planning. 
Working with our insurance advisory committee and insurance carrier, we found a creativity way of using the Medicare Part D prescription program, a program most of all communities had moved to well over 10 years ago, to cut the cost of retiree health insurance by almost 50% while continuing to provide quality coverage to our retirees. We adopted a team concept built around our various functional service areas to bring our staff closer together. We now support our various land use and permitting services with strong staff team and our developmental service office. We reorganized the highway and parks units to share equipment and our staff better meet the ongoing maintenance needs of our physical plant. Our public works director, Mr. Alan Mayo, who has made great strides in implementing the change, working as a team, our senior center is collaborating with the Templeton's Director of Veterans Services in providing monthly services for veterans luncheons on the last Thursday of every month. The planning board adopted the new master plan to guide our future. Knowing that economics development is critical to our future prosperity, the select board created the Economics Development Industrial Corporation for the town of Templeton. We now seek personnel knowledgeable in the fields. I urge you to submit your letters of interest in becoming an EDIC member uh, to the Board of Selectmen. Mr. David Dickey became our full-time fire chief and is moving forward to fully implementing our complement of providing you with locally serviced advanced life support AOS ambulance. As I said in our opening, my opening statement, we will kick off our discussion to the challenges our town faces for the coming fiscal year. Those include maintaining and building on the progress of our great financial team, meeting our capital needs to address our aging fleet, build up adequate financial reserves to meet economic downturns and emergencies, setting aside sufficient assets to cover our pension and other post-employment benefits, OPEB obligations, continue to provide the types of levels of services to the community which qualified and dedicated personnel. Meet those challenges will require our community spirit, our com commitment to work together. It will take creativity and skill to find solutions that work for our entire community. I thank you for all, all for, uh, I thank you all for following me in part of this process and encourage me, encourage one and all to join this effort whatever times can be spared for your community. <clears throat> so Carter, uh, what do you say we talk about uh, a, dip, a bit more in depth if folks at home have a better sense of where we are? Uh, let's see, I believe the important address the long term, the issues I have committed to uh, working for more affordable and senior housing and keeping our school and town safe. Well, certainly the affordable uh, housing issue is uh, an extremely important one. Um, you may recall from looking at the forms that Luann prepared uh, that a great portion of the increase in the town's values uh, was in uh, those duplexes, right. those doubles, which um, uh, provide uh, not only rental housing in many areas, uh, but also, I can remember growing up, they were uh, sort of the, the starter home for, for many folks. Right. They couldn't necessarily afford a home uh, of their own, uh, so they, um, they bought that double and they lived on one side and they rented out the other side. Uh, with the, the sales at uh, Day Mills, we um, have a number of homes that have come into the board and you have a right of first refusal on some of those affordable housing units. And, and the town hasn't had the funds to buy them and spin them back out. Uh, and, um, you know, we need to make sure that there's a, a level of housing for everyone. Uh, so that uh, when I say affordable housing, you know, a lot of folks uh, sometimes think about low income. Right. Um, but <laughs> I'm also talking about the... Uh, you know, the, the person who's just gotten out of, of college and they're that $32,000 a year, $33,000 a year teacher and, and they've got student loans. Right. Um, the fella who works at, uh, you know, Jiffy Lube and maybe he's only getting 30 hours a, a week or he's getting 40, but it's only at 17 bucks an hour. Right. Um, our own highway workers, our own, you know, so affordable housing um, uh, covers a wide range of things. And uh, one of the things that the board talked about um, a little bit, and we're going to be bringing you something on in the, the near term here, is, is trying to uh, study how to reuse the, the Baldwinville Elementary School. 
uh, which also has some large tracks, uh, old abandoned railroad lines behind it, uh, of town land. So, uh, you know, I'm hoping that, uh, and I'm going to uh, meet with the Community Preservation uh, Committee's chairman here. I'm, I'm hoping that we can find a way, uh, uh, the board working with a committee such as Baldwinville School Reuse Committee, if, if we can get that off the ground, something right. like that, and a, a group of folks, um, yeah, to develop a game plan uh, to try to make sure that the town has a a supply of quality, affordable housing. Um, and maybe, uh, you know, the governor talks about all these new units he wants to create. Maybe he'll put some dollars behind uh, that. That would be great. Because um, I think, uh, wasn't the, the school on Baldwinville, didn't that get turned into... Affordable housing through the housing authority. It did. You said it did. Yes. Would well, you remember when that was at all? I don't remember. I was many many years ago when they converted that uh, that old school into affordable housing, um, which I guess is four units in there, I believe now, uh, which it's, it's always full. So we obviously the need for affordable housing is here. You know, under the uh, the statute of the Affordable Housing Act and stuff like that. I think you know we we need to work forward uh, to make sure we. Uh, we implement that as a program. And these smaller projects like the Baldwinville Elementary School, are, are they're tough for developers to do because they require so much effort for so few units and then they have to manage them, so someone like the Housing Authority. Right. So I'm hopeful that uh, between uh, perhaps some seed money from Community Preservation Committee uh, and folks who uh, perhaps might be interested in adaptive reuse of the, the Baldwinville Elementary School, um, that the board can uh, find a way to put this on their agenda, as you're suggesting it should be. I think it should be. So we, need to, we need to start work on that progress. It, it is a challenge. Um, uh, certainly that's, that's one of the broader uh, challenges, the economic development uh, that you brought up, I think mm. is extremely important. Uh, and the board's just authorized uh, um, the MRPC to seek some funds on behalf of that, and you're working with the EDIC now. And I am. So uh, maybe if you would, you could touch upon that uh, uh, that potential grant because I'm I'm not up to speed on that one as much. I'm been accused of being more of a bean counter. <laughs> well, basically, uh, you know, with this grant that come, it, that's we're going to be ap potentially applying for, which we uh, the board of selectmen did approve at least the process of the paperwork to go forward. Um, the full approval is not in effect yet, uh, but basically what it does is it allows dollars for, um, you know, uh, your know, site surveys, mm -hmm. identifies locations in town that could be potential used for economic development. Um, you know, and obviously there is a stipulation within that that you would have to, whatever dollars were, were used would, uh, would be, have to be paid back by the town at a later date. Uh, based on the development of the community or the development of the site. So it's like uh, you, you're getting your money up front to do this, the work that needs to be done as far as the surveys, the overlays, um, the measurements and all that, you know, EDIC type of work that needs to take place. And then uh, if it does get developed, then obviously then some of that money will be, have to be paid back from the grant. Um, but it, I think it's a, it's a great program to start. I think it's a, it gives us a kind of a leg up on where we stand economically and, and how we can build Templeton uh, with some type of, uh, you know, small business or industry. And that's at exit, uh, oh God, can you help me remember what number that's at? Is that exit 20? I believe you're right, it was exit 20. Okay. And so that would be, if I recall right from the presentation, that would be at three corners of it because one of the corners is pretty much state forest lands. That's correct. And uh, and, and one, one large company did purchase... Um, one piece of that that property, mm -hmm. uh, one of those one of those squares, uh, which I believe was like fifty three or fifty four acres. Uh, so there is a business going in there. Uh, they're doing some renovation work now and some groundwork, but um, but we'll that sh that should be pr very, pretty prosperous for us as well. Well, that's critically important, uh, not only for jobs, mm. uh, because uh, we need good quality uh, jobs in the region that. Uh, they pay a livable wage and, and have a benefit package. And, uh, folks can afford to uh, support their families, um, buy goods and services, send their kids to school, 
take a vacation, do those kinds of things. But it's also critically important to the bottom line of the budget because we only have um, a, a few revenue streams. Right. We have our, our fee for services, uh, build permits and the like, which uh, only give us a, about 10% of our budget, not even that. Um, we get some money from the state. Right. So buy those lottery tickets, folks, and I do hope you're a winner when you do it. But uh, <laughs> all, the, all the money that we get truly comes out of that, that lottery. Um, uh, and then we have the real estate taxes, which right. is everyone who's already here, or new growth. And so we're really looking for that new growth as much as possible. You've had a good couple of years now. Um, but obviously we want to keep those up. We're kind of stabilizing now a little bit more now than... Yeah, uh, you had been, been going down uh, when the uh, recession uh, really was at its, its peak, mm -hmm. but you had a, a pretty good uh, growth year last year. You're, you're back above $600 million. Right. Um, you know, the, the challenge obviously is that if we're raising $15 million and we have $600 million base, you can see that if we can have a $650 million base, but only need to raise, let's say, six, the same $16 million, mm -hmm. the tax rate goes down. Right. Now, it is fairly affordable. Well, I use a measure that's, that's called percentage of, of income. And um, if you take the single family tax bill and you divide it by the median family income, you're actually the lowest uh, uh, rate mm. in the region in your 10 comparable towns. Right. That doesn't help any when the bill comes in. <laughs> And no. you crack it open. And, um, nope, that just happened to my son. And uh, he bought a house here in Templeton, and he got his first tax bill. And, you know, he opened that up and was like, oh, whoa, hey, it went up a little bit. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, but, you know, we're the tax rate's still at $16.72 a thousand. So uh, comparable to the t surrounding communities that surround us between, you know, Ashby and Winchenden, Hubbardston, and, and Phillipston, I mean, those are all... You know, twenty, twenty-one dollars a thousand. You, so you have not only the lowest rate, but the lowest effective rate. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a, a median family income of about three and a half percent to pay their property taxes, which is pretty low. Now, the the coming up, um, not only this conversation here tonight, uh, but in about two weeks, you're going to host the all boards meeting. That's correct. And uh, maybe you want to uh, talk for a moment about, uh, that'll be the second one this year. Um, it was. It and would. the effort to get folks together, talk about moving forward as a team, bring in additional ideas. You want to, would you take a moment and chat about that? Please? Sure. Uh, well, obviously, you, you know, last year when the Board of Selectmen got together and, you know, we tried to brainstorm some ideas of how we can collectively get uh, you know, all the committees and boards together to come up with hopefully solutions and, and ideas of moving forward. Uh, because again, no matter what group or committee you're on, if it's the Board of Selectmen or it's a, if it's the uh, school committee or if it's the, uh, the health department, uh, maintenance, uh, parks and recreation, it doesn't matter. Everybody has one common goal, and that is to hopefully make Templeton better. Uh, so bringing everybody together to get the their opinions and thoughts and processes and you know put some things on paper so we can see where where their goals and mindsets are to see where if we can come together collect, collectively to hopefully come up with a solid plan moving forward. Uh, I think having everybody in one room, uh, having a, a nice you know discussion concerning the town's welfare and the town's ability to move forward, uh, not just a financial and economical point of views, but you know you know working with the children and the kids in the school and you know, working with the other, other, the agricultural people and, you know, working with those folks to make sure how are we going to make, put Templeton on the map, so to speak. Well, hopefully uh, we'll get some good things out of that. And sometimes, you know, one board has one way of doing things, another board has different priorities. But, but when you hear them out, you adjust your own priorities, you adjust your own thoughts, you, mm -hmm. you learn some things from that. Uh, another thing, let me just touch upon the budget itself for okay. a moment. Um, we are in this state tax capped. That is proposition two and a half limits right. what our revenues can be. And uh, it's not the first town I've worked in that's been tax capped. Uh, there are different caps in, in Michigan or in some other states. Right. But the challenge to it is that you, you only have three things you can do. 
uh, you either find a way to do things a little more efficiently, and most of our uh, budget is people. Right. Uh, we can't hire a robot to do things or um, you know, ship uh, some of our processes uh, out of the state or out of the country. Uh, or we, um, we have to find some added revenues, and we work at that always. So we'll talk in, hopefully in a moment about the meals tax process. Mm -hmm. uh, or we have to do without some services. It's, uh, these are unfortunate choices, but they are hard choices. Right. And I think that, you know, um, potentially between, uh, we don't have word yet on what the uh, pension increase will be this year. Uh, that's actually coming up uh, in about a week from today's taping. That's coming up, I think, the 9th of January. We'll meet with the Worcester County Regional Retirement System and talk about what our assessment for the next two years will be. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our uh, OPEB obligations that's right. that we need to meet. Uh, and uh, we have a health insurance, uh, which has been going up at about uh, seven half eight percent a year. But again, talking about health insurance, I believe um, last year, or this this fiscal budget, that we put some dollars aside uh, to hopefully uh, you know, hire a uh, individual that's going to help us hopefully come up with a better health care program for our employees. So they still get the same quality health care, but maybe for a lower dollar. We did. Uh, and I think that you referenced it in your opening comments. Last year, uh, we made some changes to the retiree plan. Um, the town had actually been paying for the prescription drugs for the retiree plan. So you had a, a pretty expensive uh, monthly premium in the $600 range. Uh, and... I found that surprising because uh, well over 10 years ago, the federal government had created, as part of the Social Security program, part of the Medicare program, right. uh, a program to provide prescriptions to seniors, to those over the age of 65 who are Medicare eligible. And most towns had either been applying for subsidies, which were available for a while, mm -hmm. uh, to offset their costs. Um, or had simply shifted to not including prescription coverage as part of their insurance. Uh, and so we were working with the Insurance Advisory Committee and our insurance carrier. Uh, we were able to make a mid-year switch um, to a same Medicare plan, same doctors, same hospitals, same uh, everything except for now the prescriptions were provided through the Part D. Mm -hmm. uh, and that saved uh, the town about $40,000 a year uh, while continuing to provide a quality service uh, to, the, um, to the retirees. In fact, right. they actually saved a little bit because their premiums went down. And for the most part, we think it's going to. But that's the kind of creativity that we've got to bring to the health insurance program. I agree. Um, some of that's going to perhaps require union negotiations, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be uh, starting with the police uh, later this month. We will need uh, an executive session with the board to talk about the parameters there. Right. Um, but the health insurance, it's, um, it's a real struggler. It's a real struggler. Um, as I say, about 8% increase a year. So... Uh, Right now, the town of Templeton, about 25% of its budget is for health insurance, uh, retirement plans, mm -hmm. um, liability insurance, those kinds of things. Right. Uh, and when you have that side of your budget increasing at 8% a year, it just it chews things up a little bit. It does, but I think the, the select board is, is pretty strong uh, standing together uh, for a, a good health care program. You know, for its employees, I think we we strongly uh, want the employees to get the pretty much the best health care that we can provide, uh, so they're uh, so they're well taken care of. Well, and that's an important part of the element because you know employees look at uh, not just the wage you're paying, but the benefit. Mm -hmm. And right now, our wages, quite frankly, in many of our positions, um, are relatively low by comparison to uh, some of our peers. We tried over the summer. I know you witnessed the struggle I did. Uh, to hire a 
or a cup of CDL, mm -hmm. uh, commercial driver license folks in the highway department. And uh, we start pay at $14.37 an hour for those positions, which is, um, I think one of your, I think your son's working for a landscape firm, yeah. doesn't even require a CDL, and you observed on the difference in the pay. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, you get, you got a, you got a young man that's working as a landscaper, and he does also have a CDL license. Right, right. Uh, He does have a Class A, but, you know, he's making $22 an hour uh, versus the same individual that's working here in Templeton is getting, you know, just $14 plus an hour. So uh, it's definitely, um, there's definitely a, a widespread of, you know, where we can go, and obviously knowing our, our uh, you know, our people, you know, our, you know, the employees, their, the salaries take up a large chunk of the budget, uh, and you know that. I mean, I mean you're looking at what, about $2,600,000 is in salaries. Um, so that's a huge piece. But our, our employees aren't really paid that well. We've got to get those wages up over time somehow to uh, be able to attract uh, new employees and then retain them. Right. Uh, the Hence search the effort. The benefits. So hopefully they'll look at those benefits, and until we can get that in balance, uh, because when we lose those employees, we lose productivity, we lose all that institutional knowledge, right. uh, and you um, you can't lose them when you want to. Right. <laughs> well, no, you're true. You know, true. There may be a, a a time of the year when uh, you know the DPW director could say, okay, you know it's going to be raining for two weeks. This would be a a good week if I had to lose folks. No. Um, you know, we lost them going into the summer, and so we weren't able to get right. the road work and the maintenance work done that we we needed to do. And those positions are really crucial. They really are. I, I mean, you look at fire, police, and, and then highway, uh, highway specifically. I mean, th these guys and, and girls, they really do a bang-up job, you know, clearing our roads, making them safe, passable, sanding, salting, et cetera. Uh, to lose one or to lose a piece of equipment, to lose one employee, that's really detrimental to Allen's uh, capabilities of uh, making sure that the town is safe. And, and I think you're right. I think they're in with the public safety personnel because just like the police have a public safety function and the fire uh, respond, uh, uh, they do the inspections, mm -hmm. fire prevention, response, uh, medical, emergency medical service. Uh, the highway guys really are public safety just as much as the other. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly with the storms that were coming up going into here. One of the challenges I will tell you that uh, you've observed a little bit, and we'll talk with uh, Chief Dickey uh, at your next select board meeting, and then Chief Dickey will actually be my guest for the February talk of the town, is the ambulance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the town went to uh, ALS, That's Advanced right. Life Support, um, and that has required a, a different level of staffing. Uh, and support. Um, it actually requires four full-time firefighter EMTs. And unfortunately, uh, the revenue stream, even after the board increased the rates, uh, simply isn't keeping pace. Um, and so Chief Dickey will come in uh, to the select board during the month of January. He's going to explain uh, the revenue stream. It is, it is hitting the number that we'd thought it would hit for this year. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't think it's going to trend up. Right. And uh, part of that is that um, there's been a change. And uh, you used to get more private insurers right. than Medicare and Medicaid. Right. And that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of flipped. Okay. And uh, you worked at uh, EM... EMS for a while, did you not? I did. I did. I worked for uh, private ambulance services, uh, you know, from when I was in high school to uh, to probably uh, 1998. So I mean, I was in there for a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I saw uh, the insurance car carriers, the HMOs, the PPOs, uh, the Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, what people don't realize is there are set rates. So Medicare has a set rate uh, for an ambulance ride. Uh, Medicaid has a set rate. The HMOs, they really don't have a set rate, but they only pay a percentage of what they want to pay. Uh, so if you had a Blue Cross Blue Shield and the ambulance ride was $1,000, you might get $800. Uh, 
Um, but Medicare and Medicaid, you're looking at, you know, an ambulance ride, even if it is AOS, advanced life support, you, you're probably looking at, you know, two, three, four dollars potentially, uh, because that's what they pay. Yeah, uh, we're, and we're getting around 400 and that's, change. Right, and that's going to be detrimental to the survivability of the ambulance, com the ambulance based on uh, the need uh, and based on the demographics here in the community, um, which I, I think at the end of the day, I, I mean, Chief Dickey's doing a fantastic job. I mean, he's, he's managing it well, he's holding it together well, uh, and he's realizing uh, how the progression and how things happened. Uh, and we, if we can go back like even a year, when, uh, when AOS was, was voted in and at a town meeting, that the town wanted AOS, the people wanted AOS service here, which is the best service that they can get. Uh, it's like having an ER at your doorstep. Uh, these individuals, these men and women, these paramedics are in, unbelievable in what their skill set is. Um, but, you know, if the, if the rates aren't there, and even though when we started AOS for almost, what, seven, eight, nine months, you know, we were bill, billing AOS rates for, at the BOS rate. So we were losing, you know, hundreds if not thousands of dollars over the course of that time frame. But then when we did increase the rates here at the Board of Selectmen meeting, um, which was complemental to the service that was being provided. Uh, it, it's still not going to make it, I don't think. It's still not going to be enough. And I think Chief Dickey is realizing that, and that's why he needs to present something to the Board of Selectmen, how we're going to do this. Yeah, the town uh, started uh, with ALS service in uh, April of 16, mm -hmm. after uh, all the various authorizations uh, were, were given, um, but uh, did not change the rate structure and actually until uh, working with uh, interim chief um, uh, Dennis uh, Hamill, uh, we presented to you, I think right. December, January of, uh, December of 16, January of 17. So we had about an eight month loss, uh, but more importantly, um, the number of billable calls is not keeping trend, Right. but you have all the same expenses. That's correct. <laughs> Unfortunately, it costs the same to staff uh, for uh, 500 calls as it does for the 750 calls. So you're getting about 500 billable calls at this point, and that ratio mm -hmm. has, has switched. So we will get the monies that we had projected for this year, but we're just not, it just doesn't look like we're going to get that growth that we were getting. Um, I will say that uh, for those of you who are interested, if you have questions for Chief Dickey when he's on next month with me, just send me an email, townadministrator uh, at templeton1.org, and we'll make sure uh, that, um, that he gets those questions. And, of course, uh, always feel free to reach out to the chief directly or to, uh, if you're considering um, volunteering as a firefighter or as an EMT. Um, he's always looking uh, for folks and interested in chatting with you about those. Uh, some of the other uh, service challenges that we have, I want to go back to the equipment mm -hmm. uh, a little bit. Um, I believe that this will this uh, fall town meeting that we just had here in November of mm -hmm. 16 uh, authorized the first purchase of a of a new six wheel dump truck in. With plow. Can, with plow. With plow. <laughs> Absolutely with plow. Uh, unfortunately, it won't come in, un, until the spring, but it'll be ready for next next year's snows. Mm -hmm. Do you recall the last time the town actually was able to buy a, a piece of equipment like that with with tax levy monies? I can't. I can't even tell you. It's been uh, it's been a long time. I know <clears throat> people had a big talk about the uh, the excavator yep. that was purchased not a couple years ago. Um, it went to the ballot box. The people voted no, but somehow it showed up. And so people were like, well, how is this possible? Well, I, I think that process was, was done, uh, I'm not going to say wrong, but I'm definitely going to say there was definitely a better way they could have done it because they ended up purchasing a piece of equipment, uh, utilization of Chapter 90 funds, uh, which he had the right to do. Uh, but again, you're not going to take them to the people. The people vote no, and then all of a sudden it shows up on your doorstep. That was really disheartening yeah. for the people and then it showed a lack of leadership, I think, at the, at the Board of Selectmen level, um, where I think we're, we're finally getting it back. I hope we're getting it back. I, I, the people need to understand the leadership team that's here, the Board of Selectmen team that's here is very strong in leadership. And I think we have the ability to make the decisions for the right reasons. Now, talking about the six-wheel dump truck, which, you know, 
these things aren't, uh, these, these pieces of equipment aren't cheap. Now you look at about $170,000 for a piece of equipment, uh, which again, we used free cash. For the, you know, and they're not readily available. Right. You, you talk in a lay time of six, seven, eight months before we get the equipment. Because, again, these big trucks are not sitting on a lot like down the street. They're, uh, they're, they're made to order. So once you purchase it, then they make it, then you get it. So it takes about six to seven months. Yes. The, uh, the excavator, I will tell you, uh, uh, I worked, as you know, previously in New Hampshire, and mm -hmm. they had an interesting statute up there. Um, no means no. <laughs> so uh, if if I put something before the town meeting, uh, and the town meeting voted no, mm -hmm. it's no. Um, I was banned for one year uh, from from <laughs> doing it. It it was no, and That's so right. um, you know I I just put that out there as a as a potential model. Well, it was definitely disheartening to see, and yeah. then, you know, because a lot of it was, you know, board of selectmen driven to a certain degree, but obviously. Uh, it was uh, it was the right process to do. It was the right process to handle, and when the people say no, it's not. Well, I put that model out there for you to think of. I will I will say that we do have a functioning capital planning committee mm -hmm. this year. Uh, it had been um, uh, troubled by a lack of a quorum for a couple of years. It was restructured uh, at the annual town meeting right. uh, of seventeen. Um, we still have two vacancies uh, on citizen at large positions. Um, it is a, a pretty demanding workload from roughly October to roughly January 15th. I know that's kind of tough. It's holiday, holiday season, season yeah. but unfortunately it's also budget season. Uh, so if folks uh, have any interest in uh, either of those positions, um, that would be terrific. I know that uh, Bob May, who's from the advisory board, mm -hmm. and, uh, Cheryl Richardson, the treasurer collector, uh, Doug Morrison's, yep. the, uh, uh, the select board's representative, would, would welcome you aboard. Um, we do hope to have a small capital program this year. Uh, and um, uh, because we do, the average piece of equipment at the highway department is 17 years old. Yes. It's, uh, it's really... I'm really nervous about this winter. I mean, what the pieces of equipment they had. They had. I mean, not the, the last storm, but uh, that we've had. And um, I think you were up in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto. Uh, Toronto. <laughs> uh, you know, I got a call from Mr. Mayo saying that, uh, you know, everything was going well, but, you know, out of, you know, seven, say, pieces of equipment, uh, five were down at one point. Uh, minor stuff. Yep. Uh, windshield wipers or... Blade need to be sharpened or something. Some you know minor minor fixes, electrical issues, uh, but they were able to repair the vehicles and, and get them back on the road. But but on the following storm, one truck had stayed down because we right. couldn't get it back on the road quickly enough. Right, and that and that's what that's what sir, that's what troubles me. You know, as a select board member, as as a community member here in the community, uh, a taxpayer here, um, it's it becomes uh, really unsafe when you don't have those plows out there on the road, you know, clear on the roads um, and in the, the side roads. I mean, it really makes makes it really difficult and challenging for Alan to manage all that at the same time. But I want to make sure that we you know, provide him solutions and help with that. And obviously, with the help that he needs is actually a rolling stock that's that's capable of handling the services that need to be provided. And we did to make the first step this year, you know. Uh, with that six-wheel dump truck, I think that's a step in the right direction. But I would hope that Alan would, with yourself, have a nice five-year plan uh, with utilization, potentially of free cash or any other resources that we have, you know, if, with the five-year plan to purchase new vehicles over the next five years in order to replenish the fleet that is deplorable. I mean, it's deplorable. And last, at the, in the budget for 2018 the, that we passed at the annual town meeting in May of 17. Um, we were able to get a new cruiser as well. It was the right. first time a new cruiser had been purchased right. with town tax levy funds in seven years. Right. Um, those also are not readily available. They take, believe it or not, three to four months right. uh, to get in. Uh, but going, going back to the public works, uh, Alan has been uh, looking at the fleet with kind of a, kind of a clean sheet of paper, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if all the equipment was destroyed, how would I think that we should um, equip this department? And he's, he's come up with a plan which he thinks will 
um, make a, a little bit better use of, of one-ton pickups. Okay. Um, they're available more readily. They're available a little bit uh, less costly. Uh, so he's reorganizing how he views the fleet, how many one-tons, how many six wheels, right. and going down on the number of ten wheels, because those are uh, approaching a quarter of a million dollars now. Right. Um, and so the board, uh, let's, let's talk about the meals tax for okay, a moment, sure. Ted. Um, we brought that uh, to you, Eric. Actually, that was <laughs> Eric's first research project, and I think he was taken back a little bit when I told him I also had to carry the ball onto the field in front of the select board. You want, to, you want to talk about our conversation with the board and well, you know sure. what your thoughts were when you authorized to have that conversation with the community? Well, basically, uh, when you're at a point in a community where you know things are you know kind of leveling out you know we have to look at every option uh, that we have every every stone has to go uh, unturned uh, to see you know what we can do to at least bring in some revenue uh, and want some somehow some way so uh, Eric did a great job with his uh, investigatory work uh, looking at the other communities you know around us that have a, a meals tax and what that tax is and um, and we, the Board of Selectmen, did authorize him to go forward uh, with uh, sending out letters to, you know, uh, providers that provide food service here in, in the community uh, to have some open discussion uh, to see what the, what the people think, uh, what the owners of the different uh, food establishments will think uh, if we do have a food tax here. Uh, you know, based on what the Department of Revenue was estimating, you know, what about forty to fifty thousand dollars? Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think. I think uh, maybe closer to the top end of, of the number you mm -hmm. had around. But let's say forty five thousand okay. plus or minus certainly. Well, well yeah. you know what? I, I think if we come up with a plan to the people to stipulate to say, hey, you know, we want to listen to what you have to say. We're going to take all that in. We're going to we're going to absorb it all, and, and then we'll come back with a, hopefully a process and a program that, that they would like. So, uh, for instance, if if this goes forward and it goes to the people, the people say yes. You know, I want a policy in place that stipulates that those funds will will spend only on certain things like capital capital, such as like say a new cruiser every year, uh, which again that's that's detrimental to the to the police department because that is legitimately part of their equipment. Uh, so when you call 911, you know, they have to go. Uh, if they don't have a vehicle, then they can't go. So I think that's, if we come up with a policy or a plan, uh, once we listen to the people, once we listen to what their thoughts and processes are, and hopefully we can all come together with a, with a common solution. Uh, it might be a, a lower percentage. You know, instead of 7%, it might be 5%. Uh, so that will decrease, you know, the higher end of, you know, 45,000 to maybe, you know, the high 38 to 40,000. But still, that's still something that we can work towards to hopefully make uh, you know, capital improvements here in the community and utilizing every resource that we have. Well, following up on the, the cruisers for a moment, and then I want to come back to the meals tax. Uh, I know that we, we've got seven cruisers mm -hmm. basically in the fleet right now, and we, at times we have two of them that are down. Right. Unfortunately, that means that we're then putting added mileage, added wear and tear on the five that are left. That's right. Uh, and, um, you know, so they're just, they wear out that much faster. And I can recall uh, in one community we actually tracked it, and we were on cycle every year to buy a new cruiser. Mm -hmm. And we spent normally about $8,000 a year on maintenance. This is a few years ago, perhaps mm -hmm. even 10 years ago. And we found that in the year in which the town, for whatever reason, took a, a hiatus, didn't buy a cruiser that year, maintenance costs went from around $8,000 a year to around $13,000 a year. That's a huge jump. Uh, and so it's, it is critical that we replace those every year so that we can uh, not only keep them all on the road, mm -hmm. uh, serving the needs of the community, but control our maintenance costs as well. Right, we'll definitely decrease those. So the, the meals tax, uh, just so folks understand it, uh, right now if you go out, you know you buy at Dunkin' Donuts or Cumberland Farms or someplace else. The, the restaurateur, the provider, adds six and a quarter percent uh, tax. So the 99 cent coffee at Cumbies costs you a dollar five. Uh, in this case, if the town adopts the meals tax, the tax is 7%. Uh, 
Um, the state sends a notice to Cumberland Farms or think of any other vendor. Cumberland Farms simply changes their c computer program and your dollar five coffee becomes a dollar six. Right. And they pay that all of the state. And once in a quarter, or every three months, the state figures out what portion is theirs, what portion is the town's, and they mail the check to the town. Right. They probably actually wire it, but I'll still, right. I'm still of the they mail the check <laughs> era. So there's uh, not a great deal of administrative burden on the restaurateurs, and there's no administrative burden on us. And with what you've authorized us to do, you're right. We're going to have that first meeting with the restaurateurs uh, next uh, next week. Mm -hmm. That uh, will be or was, uh, depending upon when you're viewing this, um, January 8th. Uh, and we tried to pick a day when a number of them are closed and a time of day when they can hopefully get away from their right. their business to, to be here with us. And we'll have another one of those uh, for the restaurant tours, and we'll have at least one or two for the community at large to explain it. Um, so, on, like I say, that dollar five coffee becomes a dollar six if you um, at at the pub and you get some burgers and fries and a couple beers, uh, coffees, a dessert. Let's say your bill's fifty bucks. Uh, it means an extra thirty eight cents. Right. So, um, you know, we'll have that conversation with the community, see what people plan, and I think you're right. We're going to, uh, if we finally uh, bring it back to the select board, believing there's support for it, um, tying it to capital is probably the best way to go. Allen's needed one tons, the cruiser, right. something along those lines. Right. But I think the process is important. Yes. And the, the, the board authorizes to have this conversation. The board made, I want to be clear to the audience, um, as I recall it, the board didn't make a decision on the tax itself. It was merely a decision to let us have that, That's correct. Have that conversation with the community. That's correct. I mean, we, as the Board of Selectmen, we, we did vote to have the conversation, to do the investigatory work to see uh, what the people, what the, what the restaurateurs, uh, the food process people here in the community, you know, what they think. We want to get all the input before any decisions met, made by us as the Board of Selectmen, and then uh, obviously then it would have to go to town floor. It does, uh, it does have approval. to be adopted by the town meeting. That's, mm -hmm. that's right. Uh, and so if the town meeting were to adopt it in May of 18, mm -hmm. then um, the state starts collecting it at the beginning of the next quarter. That's right. So that's um, June, July 1. July 1. Uh, and then you start getting a that's check correct. every quarter. Right. Uh, and um, if the town were to adopt it, we think it would pay for the, the lease on a one-ton and a cruiser That's correct. Um, every year. And so um, this would support uh, Allen having uh, four one-tons in his fleet every three years on a lease. And um, then he'd have to try to get 12 years out of them, which is a lot. Can you imagine the reduction in maintenance costs, though? Can you, I mean... The amount of money that Allen spends on maintenance right now uh, versus once we get this increased rolling stock that's, that's, that's decent, uh, he's going to look at a, a drastic reduction in maintenance costs. Well, I, I, I don't know if he'll look at a reduction in maintenance costs, but he'll at least be able to get through the year without having a heart attack <laughs> uh, every time something goes wrong. You know, something goes wrong on some of these equipments, and he's sometimes talking to me about a part that's $2,400, right. $2,700. Um, now, uh, if if the community was to agree that the meals tax made some sense and the board was to put it in front of the community and, and we did use it on capital, I don't want to uh, make it seem like that's it. We're all right. set because the fire equipment, Oh yes. Um, we managed to get that uh, into the low teens, I think twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 for maintenance. Yeah, which is a tire, year. by the way. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean the the, the <laughs> and when you look at when you look at fire apparatus, when you look at a, a ladder truck or or an engine or a pumper, or a, uh, I mean, it, that, that those pieces of equipment are not like cheap. Oh my goodness! You know, I, I looked uh, when my Highlander needed tires. It was like nine hundred dollars for the forum, and I was having a heart attack. And then Chief Dickey will come to me and. One of his tires is like twelve hundred dollars right. or something. You know, yeah. it's right. <laughs> right. 
and, and the uh, the ladder truck last year, the, when it needed the pump repairs, I think it was close to twenty five. That's correct. Thousand dollars, and this year it had the electrical uh, problems, uh, that where the ladder wouldn't mm -hmm. extend. And, uh, and the ambulance. Don't forget the ambulance, oh, which is you know another yeah. extended cost, which is something that's going to be needed, I believe, in twenty eighteen. Yeah, yeah. It's it's time to replace the ambulance, and that's they're only about, good for five years, I believe. Correct. Yeah, and they're about <laughs> they're about three hundred thousand dollars now. Yeah. You know, and you just look at this equipment, and it's like, oh my goodness! You know, you think of all the things you can do with this equipment, and 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 how good it is, and the changes. Um, you know, I bought a new vehicle. That certainly, all the the gear, but mm -hmm. then you look at the price tag and the maintenance costs on all of that. Right. Um, keeping on the, uh, the the equipment, though, you know that that repair to the ladder truck was, I believe, almost eighteen thousand dollars, which more than. Then wiped out the chief's repair budget. And of course, yeah, because last year you only had what ten thousand, I believe. Uh, Eight thousand. Last year he only had about two thousand. This year, oh, was it <laughs> this year he had about ten. We were able to goose it. Right. Um, and next year we need to try to find a way to bring it up yet again somehow. Mm -hmm. And you know, so that's that's that balancing act. You know, we need money for to repair things, and we need money to buy new equipment. But we either have to find ways to do things more efficiently find more revenues, or find services we're willing to do without. And I say we, that's the community that's saying. Collectively, I'm, right. I'm a hired gun, I'm the bean counter, I'm the guy that tells you what the numbers are, but that's that's a community decision. And people, I don't think people realize the the maintenance piece of the fire apparatus is, is not like we do our own maintenance. Th those are, th those maintenance costs are, they go out, they're, sh they're shipped out. They're that's, not that's done right. here in town. That's right. The uh, uh, equipment repairs on the fire trucks, and a lot of that has to be certified to NFPA standards. That's correct. Um, and, and, you know, let me just say that uh, our mechanic does a great job. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the guy takes it really personal. It's, it's almost like it's his own children that he's That's, trying yep. to maintain down there. Some of it does get pretty frustrating. I know we certainly have our fingers crossed and would ask everybody to say a novena for the mm. uh, one truck that we're replacing now, that 66. You know, one of the other areas that uh, besides equipment that we really need to address here in the not too distant future is uh, snow and ice budget. That's There's correct. Uh, only two places in, w three places in which a town uh, can spend without authorization, um, court judgments, mm -hmm. debts, uh, and and snow and ice. Right. Uh, and so this year uh, we, you'd been budgeting 125 for a number. Well, you had been budgeting 165 about five, six, seven years ago, mm -hmm. and it was cut to 125 in a budget crisis. But. It really doesn't matter what your budget, because at the end of the day, the expenses are the expenses. We were able to get that up this year to one hundred and thirty-two thousand five hundred. Um, you really ha need to be budgeting somewhere around one hundred and seventy-five to two hundred thousand dollars. I think last year we spent what two hundred and twenty thousand. Last year was a tough winter, so about two hundred and twenty thousand. Um, and the challenge is for a lot of folks uh, is uh, even in a not heavy snowfall year. This account can really run in deficit because mm -hmm. of the ice side. I know Alan and his guys would much rather deal with eight inches of snow than one inch of oh, no, ice, absolutely. freezing no, absolutely. rain. Absolutely. Um, I mean, and, and, and the work they do with that, I mean, you know, purchasing the salt, uh, but then mixing it themselves, uh, having to, you know, because it gets ice, there's no shield, there's no housing of the snow of the snow and ice pieces of equipment, meaning the the sand and salt. Um, you know, I and I know Alan's looking at some options, but uh, that freezes, so they have to put it back through a machine to uh, to re uh, redo. It does. The sand they have they have to rescreen it, and right. I think that the towns, for a long time, been mining sand out of a, a pit that's nearing uh, exhaustion. Mm -hmm. So, Alan's looking at this, you know, long term, holistically. Right. What do I do when this next round of sand that was prepared last year is, mm -hmm. is used up and done? Um, and there's environmental reasons uh, why the sand, uh, you know, we found in the last community where we reduced sand uh, usage dramatically. Um, 
we had quite a bit of saving. We didn't actually save anything. It cost about the same in the end, uh, but it reduced the wear on the equipment. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, the products that we switched to uh, were more effective, uh, and it reduced the street sweeping, That's the catch basin mm -hmm. cleaning, and it reduced the fines that were all being washed into the wetlands, of which you've got a number here throughout. That's uh, correct. So, uh, look, I, um, I think we've just about used up our, our time. I want to thank you for uh, joining me here and kicking off. I do think 2017 was a pretty productive year in general. I thank the board for their support uh, of the staff, and I want to thank the staff myself personally for all that they've done. I mean, uh, I think it was the first year, and I don't know how many, where you only needed two town meetings to get through the year. Yeah, and how many transfers? Oh, golly, it wasn't many. No, At the end wasn't. of the year, it was there were but a handful, and mm -hmm. we were able to handle them almost all uh, uh, internally within the budget. We had a few. Um, uh, we had uh, first capital purchases. Uh, I know that was with the um, uh, the free cash, and we um, uh, started down trying to get the OPEB resolved. We, we have asked the both utilities to try to, step up because they're enterprise mm -hmm. funds and they can raise their revenue streams and they have a, a more flexible revenue structure than we do. We have asked the utilities to see if, if they can't get their OPEBs right. fully funded um, to help um, uh, make our overall financial picture look a bit better. Yeah, but they are doing well. They are, they are doing uh, i got to give uh, Mr. Driscoll a... Byte, uh, Byte, uh, Byte has done a great job on their side. We're uh, going to be meeting with him uh, this month to talk about uh, a method by which um, uh, by which he could establish a count on the water side. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've made that available to the sewer. We've asked them to do that as well. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a challenging year, but it's a good year, and we just, we're going to keep our fingers crossed that the, uh, the economy keeps rolling along. Right. Uh, and that we can um, uh, get caught up to where the town needs to be before the next economic downturn. This is one of the longest periods of economic growth uh, the nation's ever had without a modest downturn. I hope I didn't just jinx it. So. Well, I hope not. I'll knock on wood. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, thank, you. thank you for joining uh, us here today for an hour or so. Uh, as always, if you have any questions uh, about of me about uh, what's going on in town, or if you have questions uh, for uh, Chief Dickey, who's going to be on next month, or suggestions of guests you'd like me to have, please uh, stop by the office here in Town Hall on Patriots Road, or send me an email, townadministrator at templeton1.org. Thank you. Have a great day.